field engineering, feasibility. Uh, these are all, not all that we have covered. Yeah, maybe a few terms. Uh, please count uh, some of the uh, metrological instruments. Uh, uh, this we see. The term please count refers to the smallest difference uh, that can be detected on the instrument. The smallest uh, instrument. The smallest uh, uh, division or the difference that can be uh, detected with that instrument we call it as le least count. Okay? And uh, for uh, metrological instruments we use the term least count. For other measuring instruments with the sensors we call it as resolution. Okay? So resolution and least count are more or less same but where you use, for example, accuracy and linearity. Accuracy for non-linear instruments, linearity for linear instruments. So it's not just uh, the, the term, that where you should use that term also is important. Okay. Uh, zero stability. Zero stability is the ability of the instrument uh, to come back to zero after the measurement is over. Okay. Uh, you know, in certain instruments, you connect the parameter, it goes and shows the reading. Um, the behavior of that in the dynamic terms we are going to discuss in another few minutes. Let's say the measurement is over, unconnect, disconnect the uh, parameter from the instrument. Instrument, you take it out and the needle or the digital reading should come back to zero. In certain instruments, it comes back to zero very quickly. In certain instruments, it takes long time. So the ability of the instrument to come back to zero is actually all zero step. So far, whatever the terms we have discussed, accuracy, precision, range, um, span, resolution, threshold, uh, whatnot, all these are terms that we have discussed till now, last three, four days, uh, are all static terms. That means they do not change with respect to time. They do not change with respect to time. Now, in this class, we are going to talk more on dynamic terms. Dynamic terms means the parameter that will vary with respect to time we are going to quantify. We are going to use that. Measuring lag. Measuring lag is one term that it is, it is the delay in response of the instrument to a change in the input signal. Is the delay in response. Response means the action by the instrument. Once input is presented, how much time it takes to show you the reading is response time. Is response time. For example, you take a thermometer, we know the you need not always focus on because of fan and just that you can focus on that so the relax person. Uh, we you take a thermometer, put it in the hot bath. We know the temperature is, let's say, 70 degrees Celsius, okay, it's very hot already. You just insert it. Do you think the very next instant it will show you 70 degrees Celsius? If the liquid column inside the thermometer slowly goes up, it takes some amount of time to show you the 70 degrees Celsius. It shows something, okay. And that amount of time it has taken to show you the correct temperature is measuring that. Clear? Fidelity, find FID is actually the trust, you know, how much I believe you is a root word. Fidelity is the truthfulness, how much you are truthful. Okay? That's the uh, meaning of the root word, find, truthful. Okay? So it is the ability of the instrument, the fidelity is the ability of the instrument to reproduce the input signal in the same form, in the same form. Uh, as the input signal, if, if, without any distortion, okay, that ability of the instrument we call it as fidelity. Uh, uh, it's very important, especially in case of filters, in case of uh, amplifiers, uh, even even uh, most other instruments. Okay, it should not change. Uh, in an amplifier, the purpose of amplifier is to amplify the magnitude of the signal. In that process, if I give a sine wave, I do not want a rectangular wave or a triangular wave or a zigzag wave in an amplified form. If I give a perfect sine wave signal, I want perfect sine wave signal as output. But here amplitude is 2 volts, their amplitude may be 5 volts or 10 volts depending upon the amplification factor that I have set. So, 
This is not fiddly. This is not fiddly. If I give sine wave, I want sine wave also. The instrument should have good fiddly. So I know my signal is not getting distorted. Many a times, we try to identify a number which we will assign as a result of measurement. For example, the temperature 50 degrees Celsius. 50 is a number. Degree Celsius is a unit. That's the result of the measurement. In certain measurements, the waveform itself is a result of measurement. For example, when we measure acceleration, vibration, um, audio signal, when we measure, the, the signal itself is the result of measurement. We might take many measurements out of it. Many parameters we may measure out of it. So, in those instruments, especially, the fidelity is very, very important. Fidelity is, you understand what is mean by fidelity? Fidelity is the ability of the instrument not to disturb the shape of the instrument. Okay. Now, the shape of the uh, input signal. If, if whatever the shape of the input signal I give, if I get the same input, then we say the fidelity of the instrument is good. Overshoot. Okay. Suppose you know you measure you measure the you measure the uh, tire pressure. You measure the tire pressure. Uh, you might have observed, you know, the man pumps air for some time, takes their hose, again connects the uh, pressure gauge. Do you think the pressure gauge exactly goes and uh, stays, let's say, 30 psi? Uh, in my car, I know 33 psi is the pressure that I am supposed to uh, maintain. So, do you think the pressure will go, the needle will go and show exactly the actual temperature of, so actual pressure of the uh, tire? It will go and then small oscillation over there. See that? There is, it will go there and then small oscillating. Maybe after some time it will settle down. Take some amount of time. So, this is, the, the response is like this. If, if I plot that output with respect to time, uh, from zero, the output increases drastically quickly. This is the uh, actual pressure, for example. But, let's say 33 PSI. I have already come to 33 PSI. Okay, now I want to measure whether it is 33 PSI. I am attaching the pressure gauge. The pressure gauge reading will vary. Initially it is at zero before connecting. The moment I connect, it starts jumping. It goes. Suppose to stop at 33 PSI, but then it may go to 34, 32, 33.5, 30, uh, 32.5, and then it reduces to 33. It settles down to 33. It takes a moment of time. Okay? That's how the typical behavior will be taking measure. So now, overshoot is the maximum amount by which the moving part, moving part means in the instrument, the normally the moving part is the needle which shows on the reading. That's what we mean by moving part. If it is a digital instrument, even digital instrument it can happen. Actually these terms are uh, defined when the uh, digital uh, displays were not very uh, common, not very famous. We had only the moving type uh, instruments. But even now it is applicable to the extent that the reading about the <coughs> mean value, how much it goes and comes down, if there is an oscillating Okay. So, it is the maximum amount by which the moving part moves beyond the steady state value is called overshoot. This is the steady state value. What is the maximum amount? It may be up, it may be down. Mostly it is up because beyond the value only it oscillates more. So, the overshoot is uh, the maximum amount. This is also beyond steady state value only. This is also beyond steady state only. But this is the maximum value beyond steady state value. So, the overshoot is the maximum value beyond the steady state uh, value is called the overshoot. So, again, <coughs> frequency response. Frequency response is a term which is, uh, which, which tells uh, the ability of the instrument uh, to respond to different frequency. Different input frequencies. Um, before going to the slide, uh, uh, we'll uh, take one example. I was working in Tata Films uh, for a couple of years. 1982, I was a production engineer in Tata Films. Uh, you know, there, they do the mic testing. Mic testing means not point, 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 one, two, three, mic testing, not, not that mic testing. We take the mic that goes inside the hands of the uh, telephones and then uh, 
check its frequency response. Okay. Suppose if I don't do that, then send it to the market. The complaint that I receive for a faulty uh, mind will be, sir, when I speak, the other person is able to hear. When my daughter speaks, uh, the other person is not able to hear. Her husband is not able to hear. Okay. Of course, it is not because of the family problem. There is a problem in the mind. For particular vocal frequency, the response may be very low or it may be zero. Maybe zero is very rare case, but the uh, amplification or the gain for that vocal frequency may be very less. So, um, if somebody speaks, uh, the mic is not transmitting the voice, whereas uh, some other people speak, it is getting uh, amplified. That problem I will get from the field. Then the, when we take that mic, do the frequency response, the frequency response will not be flat like this. This will have some dip here and then go. Okay? Or here there is a dip and then go. So this range of frequencies for which the frequency response is down, dip. Uh, those people who have the vocal frequency in that range, the mic will not transfer. That means the mic is basically a transducer that will not respond for these frequencies. Okay. Now, let's understand this graph so that you know, the explanation becomes more clear. X axis is frequency, frequency of the signal. Okay. Y axis is the gain. Gain means what? Output signal divided by input signal. Okay. So basically gain is proportional to output value or proportional to output. If our output is more, gain will be more for the given input. For the given input. So gain, probably you can imagine this is the output of the transducer, but then technically speaking, it's gain. Okay. This is typically drawn on a semi-log graph. The semi-log graph means this is logarithmic scale, this is ordinary scale, linear scale. 1, 2, 3, 4, like that the graduation will be. Here 1, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, like that. Because you know, wide range of frequencies we have plot. Starting from, let's say if it's a vocal frequency, it starts from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So that much in the linear scale we cannot plot. If you plot, then the lower range values you cannot represent properly. You wanted to represent the lower range values also properly and have wide range, then the proper graph sheet that you have to use is similar graph. So x axis is uh, logarithmic scale, y axis is linear scale, you have similar graph is plot. Number one. Number two. Now, this is frequency axis, this is output. You, you can imagine as output of the transducer. Gain is an output of transducer. Okay? So now, I keep varying the input signal frequency 0 hertz, 1 hertz, 2 hertz. Using function generator, I keep on increasing the uh, uh, frequency. And then observe how its magnitude uh, varies. For initially, for smaller frequencies, you may get like this. And then it goes to uh, maximum gain magnitude. And it remains there, it has to be flat and big. Then only it has good frequency. Okay. For very, very small frequencies, this particular instrument has to behave well. Does it behave well? The, the frequencies, uh, uh, left side of this particular uh, limit, it doesn't behave well because the gain for that is small. It doesn't respond well. Low frequency signals comes and talk to us, it doesn't talk to them back then, go back then. So it doesn't talk well, they respond well. So the instrument does not give uh, high voltage outputs for frequencies of lower frequencies. Also, it doesn't talk well, it doesn't respond well for very high frequencies. Okay, very high frequencies. Beyond this, anything you go, the response is not so good. And beyond this, there is no response. Beyond this, there is no response. So the instrument behaves well, responds very well in this frequency range. For the yeah, mic, for the mic, because it is dealing with uh, sound signal uh, and audible range of sound signal is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. This is 20 hertz, this is 20 kilohertz. If I have a flat response, flat response in ideal case it should be a straight line, but it not be a pakka straight line. But small ups and downs will be there, small ups and downs will be there. That's perfectly all right. But uh, response. It should not be dip here and then go, should not go up and go, should have a flat response. Then only uh, 
uh, if everybody speaks, you will get the same uh, volume at the other side. If there is sudden height there, if the vocal frequency falls at the high frequency, when they speak very small volume, you will be hearing as if those people are shouting at you. Okay, so uh, that's also not preferred. We want to set the gains, uh, other adjustments uh, electronically, so that you will be able to hear comfortably. The decibel level should be uh, you know, pleasant so that you can hear properly. So for that, this frequency response should be minimum. This is with respect to the telephone. This is with respect to the telephone. Measurement, it is all the more important. At least telephone, the functionality is Somebody is speaking, you should be able to hear. But measurement unit, measurement instruments has much more responsibility. If I am giving one signal, it should uh, measure that well, give the corresponding output signal correctly. Okay, it should give the corresponding output signal correctly. Just because the frequency is different, it should not give a wrong reading. It should not give a wrong reading. So, maintaining the perfect straight line, the range of frequency the measurement is meant for, it is an absolute essential. There I said it is okay to have little uh, uh, small variation. For measuring instruments, it is absolutely essential. It is absolutely essential to have a perfect straight line in the range of measurements. Okay? For example, I have an accelerometer. Accelerometer is meant for measuring vibration signal. Okay? It is meant for measuring vibration signal. The vibration may be, see, maybe that now body is vibrating. Okay? Maybe a pulse, very high frequency, or maybe a slow uh, uh, vibration signal. For example, there is an earthquake, uh, there is a uh, seismic movements happening uh, below the earth. If you put an accelerometer, there will be a variation in the vibration. Uh, the, during the earthquake movement or mild earthquake, you might have experienced. You know, there is a small shaking and all. They are all low frequency signals. Something under the earth moves. So there is a small shake here. Yeah. So there are low frequency signals. Okay. Basically there are also vibration signals. This is also vibration signal. Uh, if you take uh, uh, you know, the uh, industrial uh, scenario, this is rotating at say 1440 RPM fan. Okay. You may have machines working at 5 RPM, 10 RPM, slow moving machines. So maybe big uh, in structure, slowly rotating. Or, uh, rotating at very high speed, 14,000 RPM, 15,000 RPM, very high RPM machines also may be there. The frequency of vibration is closely related to the rotational speed. If low rotating speed will have low frequency, high rotational speed will have high operating frequency. So your isochrometer should be able to measure uh, for the prescribed uh, range of frequencies and the output should be exactly same. This will be calibrated and given to you. Any accelerometer you buy, you demand the manufacturer, I want the calibration curve, they will give you the frequency response curve. All that you need to verify, whether the instrument is perfectly good or not, is what is the range of frequency they have given. You know, there are MIMS uh, accelerometers available in the market for 250 rupees, 300 rupees. The range may be uh, 5 hertz to uh, 1000 hertz or 3000 hertz small range of frequency, only low frequency to measure. Okay. So, 3 hertz or 5 hertz to 3000 hertz. In that range, if this is right in the calibration cloud, that means the diagonal is good. For the stated range of measurement, the response of the instrument, frequency response of the instrument is flat, so it is good. So, that way you look at it and then buy the instrument. You go for very high range of frequencies. For example, uh, we buy piezoelectric accelerometers for uh, measuring vibration signals to occur the uh, machine vibrations, to do fault diagnosis and other things. There, the range of dynamic range of frequencies will be from, let's say, 5 hertz or 3 hertz to 20 kilohertz or uh, 10 kilohertz, things like that. That's the range of frequency. Kilohertz, kilohertz means 10,000 hertz, 20,000 hertz. Like that. So, for the entire range, the response should be flat. If it's flat, that means the instrument is So, frequency response is uh, the ability of the instrument to respond to various frequencies of the input signal. Equally, whether it is 1 hertz or 5, 5 hertz or 10 hertz, as long as it is within my range of frequencies, I should be able to respond properly. 
if I have that characteristics, I will have good frequency Okay? For a teacher, whether you are a boy, you are a girl, whether you are from Tamil Nadu, whether you are from Andhra or you are from North India, uh, you are black, white, tall, short, irrespective of anything, as long as you belong to my class, if I respond uh, equally with uh, due respect, that means I have good frequency response. You understand, no? Suppose if I show partiality, that means I have poor frequency response. So that's how the frequency response is. So how well a system responds to different frequencies uh, is given by the term. Different frequencies of input signal is called frequency response. Any questions? Is that clear? Any any questions? Okay. Loading. During the act of measurement, the measurement system takes some amount of signal source. This will disturb the entire measurement. This act is called loading. Suppose you are cooking. You are cooking. Or you might have seen your mom is cooking. Uh, let's say mom is making some curry. And she wants to know whether the salt and chili powder she has added to the right uh, amount. So what does she do? Take small amount of curry, for many, take small amount of curry to spoon. She eats away something and then checks whether the salt and the chili powder, everything added properly. Actually, what she has done in the process of checking whether every ingredients are added correctly, she has consumed some amount of sambar or some amount of curry. This is loading effect. Many people write in the examination, those who don't know the answer, loading effect means the amount of load that we can put on the instrument and things like that. It has nothing to do with the load. Loading effect is the uh, amount of signal eaten by the instrument for the purpose of measurement. For the purpose of measurement. Is that alright? Okay. In the next lecture about uh, sources of error, I have listed five loading effect uh, Illustrations. I talk more on the loading effect in the next class. That's all. Right.